All right. So welcome to accounting class two. Today we are going to get into the meat of how to understand the building blocks of accounting. So what I want from all of you guys is grab a pen and a piece of paper, or if you take notes by typing, I got no, I don't care how you do it. But what I'm going to do today is reward you for turning in your notes to me. So however you take notes, um, I'm going to make a little assignment and put it up on Connect and Blackboard that gives you 50 points for notes. I promise you, I am busy enough in my life that I'm not going to grade your notes for like periods, commas, all that stuff. But I can scan your notes and say like, this guy was listening, this lady was listening to me, or they were playing Candy Crush the whole time and I'm not giving them 50 points because they don't deserve that. I promise that I won't be the kind of teacher that always does PowerPoints. I will keep it mixed up. I will keep it interesting, but you have to learn the foundations today in order to be successful for the rest. So if you're tired, if you're sick, if you're really struggling, like shake it off, get through this for me. This will all be, this will also be posted, but take the time to engage this just so everything makes more sense. Questions or concerns before we dip into in the future, I'm going to remind myself not to say like, hey, guys, this is going to be terrible. Buckle up. Um, it's just not I'm still getting you guys to know me and I don't want to be that guy who drones on on a PowerPoint. Um, and I'll try to make sure that once we get like half an hour deep, we can all go get a cup of coffee and stretch our legs a little bit. But let's let's go through the chapter two PowerPoint in your in your emails and in Blackboard announcements. You'll see a link to a bunch of things that I sent to you to help you follow along today. So if we go into Blackboard, your announcement looks like this. It's also in your email. So I'm not going to spend too much time on the manifesto today, so don't worry about that. Um, the What that document is, is me trying to make sense of how to explain business's mission to you guys. I'm going to click on this just for a second um, to start by framing this. And the thing that 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 matters to us is how does how does our faith fit into business? And I'm not going to make us read a whole four page thing. I want us to look at the first two sections of this. Right. The first affirmation of the manifesto for business as ministry. Wealth creation is rooted and God the creator, who created a world that flourishes with abundance and diversity. Number two says we're created in God's image to co-create with him and for him to create products and services for the common good. Think about this for a minute, you guys. Like you're going into business. Business is a simple way of saying you build something that solves people's problems. And my wife, I wrote this thing on Facebook, right? Because we're, we're also missionaries in Belize. And I wrote this thing on Facebook and my wife yelled at me. I wrote, we, we built a machine that provides $5,000 a week to the poor. Strange, right? AJ, is that a, a really off color blind spot in my life to write? I wrote, I built a machine that gives $5,000 to the poor. It sounds like a strange way of putting something. Thank you. I appreciate your honesty. I thought it was amazing because what I will teach you guys is if you're going to build a business, you're building a machine, right? You're building systems on how to build a product, how to train your employees, how to do this. You're building a machine that makes money, right? So we built a business. I'm a strange duck. So I say I built a machine to make money. But every week, I get to create. I get to come up with my own ideas and implement my own ideas and come out with new ice cream flavors and come out with new packaging. And I genuinely see God in the development of a business and the development of creating things. My internet might start lagging. All right. So what I want to do now is you guys open up that email 
and or go into announcements and go ahead and open up the PowerPoint presentation that we're going to be looking at today. Um, if you can follow along just on my screen, that's fine. But we're going to do the chapter two PowerPoint for accounting. And I'm going to stop and tell you a whole bunch of times, like write this down, don't forget it, it's super important. Or I'm going to say, take a picture of this slide and print it out. Um, there's a few slides in this PowerPoint presentation that if you print them out and keep them in a folder for your accounting, your life will get so much easier. And today I'm going to teach you how to use those so that you understand how to speak the language of the textbook so that accounting makes sense right out of the gates. All right. So, and a lot of this will be review from chapter one. And then I will make sure that I leave us time at the end of this class where you can ask me specific questions about your chapter one and I can answer them to make sure that you you get your assignment filled in and ready to rock for tonight. So what is happening in accounting? The first thing that we're looking at is called source documents, right? What is the role of an accountant? What are they actually looking at on a day-to-day -day basis so that they can create reports that describe the business? That's what we're looking at. So what I want you guys to think of when you think about source documents is every business has a big stack of receipts somewhere that need to get filed away. Right? This is what it's a stack of receipts that need to get filed away in a manner that is consistent with how everybody else puts their, their, their books together. Right? These genuinely accepted accounting principles are what make sure that the landscape business and the painting business and the consulting business all keep score the same way so that a few simple accounting reports will make sense of it. So if you think about, I'm in accounting and I get a job as an entry level intern at an accounting firm. Do you know what you guys will be doing? If you're in a business and you get an entry level accounting job, you're gonna take receipts and you're gonna put them into the right files electronically. That's what your work is. So the examples of source documents, a bill from a supplier, a sales receipt, checks, purchase orders, payroll records, bank statements. These are the things that an accountant uses to put them in a filing cabinet, all right? And maybe filing cabinet is not the language that you guys speak because that's super old school. But can you all in your mind visualize taking these receipts and putting them into the proper filing cabinet? Nod your heads if you can take that leap with me. This is what we're doing. We're, we're, we're organizing documents in the right files. So there's a few things that you're going to get introduced to in this, this week's lecture. An account is a record of the increases and decrease in a specific liability, equity, revenue, or expense. Now, for most of you, you don't speak that language and that sentence doesn't make a whole lot of impression into your mind because you're like, I don't talk that way. So instead, I want you to think about it like this. In every single business, the accountant has a chart of accounts. A chart of accounts is all of the possible areas that a business would need to file or keep track of in order to tell their story well. So in the accounts you keep track of, and maybe this will be easier if I do this. Here's all the things that you're gonna see that you're gonna to have to learn how to recognize immediately. These are the accounts, right? So the cash in a business, you're gonna have one little account that tells you every time cash moves around your business. And all of that is coming back from the general ledger. So the general ledger is a list of everything that happens in your business. The account is everything that happens with cash, everything that happens with accounts receivable. Each one of these, you can see how the book kind of makes it into a little file folder. When you're thinking of the account, you're thinking of the file folder that says, here's all of the times that we impacted our inventory. And that way, if inventory gets messed up, we can go back, open up the file with all of the inventory in it, and look through all the transactions to find out where our mistake was. Mr. DeYoung. Yes, sir. I don't think the PowerPoint is showing up in on the Zoom. 
Oh, AJ, you're a hero for telling me that. And Parker, minus five points for you not speaking up sooner, okay? How about now? Yep, it's shown up. And that's embarrassing. All right. So source documents, I covered that one. Um, the next thing is accounts and ledgers. So the general ledger is a list of everything that happened in the business. An account is all of these separate file folders that exist to make sure that we can keep track of each individual file for the business. Because what happens is these all turn into the financial statements that everybody uses to talk about their business. So let's say that Mr. Zerfus has a business where he, he says, hey, Professor DeYoung, um, I'm doing landscaping and I need your advice on how to run the business. Well, I can't say, yeah, Zerfus, you're my buddy. I'm gonna get on a plane. I'm gonna go look at this thing. Even though I would love to have that kind of money, I, I, I don't think I ever will again. Instead, I will say to him, send me your income statement. Income statement and profit and loss statement are the same thing. Send those to me, Mr. Zerfus, and I will look at them and tell you how to improve your business. Send me your balance sheet and I'll tell you what things stand out to me so that you can understand your business better. So all of these things, all of the things that we're talking about is just so we can create the reports that will tell other people about our business. All right, the next slide that we're into are all the different asset accounts. Now, when you look at this slide, guys, the crucial part of understanding this is memorizing it, right? You have to memorize all of this stuff so that when there is a transaction, you guys can automatically stop and say, wait, are they talking about an asset? Are they talking about a liability? Are they talking about an equity account? In the next week of your lives, you have to move from learning about this topic for the first time to being able to internalize. I just read something about cash. Boom, my mind knows that's an asset. I know where to put it. I know that when an asset increases or decreases, I put it into this category so that I can keep track of my business. Jorge, so far, are we good? Any clarifying questions? Mr. Bonima? Satisfied? Jorge, I saw you were going to unmute. Was that just to tell me it's all good or you, do you have a question? Yeah, no, no, all good. All right. Somebody asked me a question just to make sure that I know that we're all caught up. All right. You don't have to ask me a question. I'm just going to assume that everybody has loved the first couple of slides of this baby and we're going to keep on going. All right. So what you guys are going to do is make sure that as you list out asset accounts, you can, you can immediately notice which one's an asset. And we're going to go through and do tons of examples. So don't worry if you're lost right now, you're actually not. I'm just leaving you a little trail of, of information so that you can do your homework. So assets, remember, what was the easy way that we described assets? It's what you own. If you're starting a business, assets are the things that you own that help you run the business. Next slide says liability accounts. And remember, liability is what you owe. So assets is what you own, the things that you bought to make a business. We're an ice cream business. The assets that I needed to run that business was cash and machinery and a building and some land to put it on. Those are assets immediately in my mind that will pop out. One thing that you're gonna to wanna to put down in your notes is anytime you see the word payable, it means liability. Every single time you see the word payable, it means a liability. So proud of you guys. You got your cameras on. You're, I can see you taking notes. Like this is what it's supposed to feel like. I'm really, I'm really thankful for you guys right now. All right, here's the equity accounts. So the equity accounts are anything that deals with common stock. You guys have all heard the word stock or stock market or things like that, but most of you have never internalized what that means. Honestly, we're about six chapters away from this even mattering to your world. 
but you should know. If I buy stock in a business, I buy a piece of ownership in that business. That's what buying stock means. It means once I purchase stock from a company, I'm part owner of the company. A dividend is money that companies pay back to the owners of the company. Both of those two things you won't see again for weeks and weeks and weeks. So if you only have so much bandwidth, don't worry too much about that. But now you know, at least when you read it, your, your subconscious will have a little bit more data to fill in the gaps. Now, revenue, this is a word that you have to make sure that you notice and understand and internalize. Revenue just means sales. When I sell ice cream, I created revenue. Revenue just means sales. Those two words are interchangeable in every way. And expenses, well, that's just your expenses. Your expenses are when you buy something that's gonna get used up in the business that doesn't maintain its value or create anything, it's an expense. All right, so. You'll see lots of areas in the textbook where you have ledger and chart of accounts. Chart of accounts, remember in your mind that a chart of accounts is a list of all of the separate files that you would need to keep track of to understand your business. That's what a chart of account is. You can think of chart of accounts as your filing cabinet. And inside of that filing cabinet are all these folders. Folder number 101 is the cash folder. Keeps track of every movement with cash. 106 is accounts receivable. It keeps track of all the people that owe us money. These are all mini folders within the great filing cabinet called chart of accounts. All right, does that make sense? Or are you guys like, what is this dude talking about? So far, so good? I'm not gonna try to brag, but I feel like this is the best I've ever done on a chapter two lecture in seven years of doing this. So let's keep on rocking. Jaden, are you happy? Oh yeah, I'm doing good. All right, then, I, then I'm gonna keep on winning. All right, we're back up and we are looking, now we understand what the ledger is. The ledger is a collection of all the accounts in the system. It's a big long sheet that tells us everything that happened in the business. You're about to see it in a couple of slides here. Debits and credits. These are going to, you're going to hate the words debits and credits for probably between seven and 14 days until you internalize it. Right? That's what I'm telling you right now. Here's in your world of accounting, everything can exist on a, on a T chart, a chart that's right down the middle. Let me see if I can show you one. Here you go. Here's our T chart or a T account. It's got the account title. Remember, this is the name of the folder for the business, our account title. The left side, oops, the left side is always the debit side. And the right side is always the credit side. Now, this is called something called double entry accounting. And I'm going to go full screen with my big head so you guys know that this is really important. Every time that something happens in the business that warrants a transaction, two sides of the accounting equ equation are impacted. Every single, every single receipt will, will create a chain reaction of two accounts on the accounting equation being impacted. So what does this look like in our own lives? Okay, if you are the kind of folks that would get a tattoo, I suggest this slide right here. This will allow you guys, and I'm gonna go one step further. This is the one, exhibit 27. Everybody stop and take a picture of this baby on your phone right now so it's in your photos that you can find it again easy. And I'll tell you why in just a second, but fall in love with exhibit 2.7. For those of you that don't have a great memory, you'll have to refer back to this for about a week and a half, two weeks until you memorize it. 
this is the rules of the game. If you are a baseball player, this says, this is how you calculate slugging percentage. This is how you calculate ERA. This is why you win. And this is why somebody would go to extra innings. It's literally the rules of the game. Don't overthink it and mean credit means you get it, right? Like that's not how it works. Debit and credit are their own unique terms that only exist on each side of the T account. So this is why this is important. And this is where we're gonna keep on going back to for your understanding. Assets. Assets, when they increase, the world of accounting generates a debit. When your assets decrease, the rules of accounting dictate that there is a credit that is created. I'm pausing for uh, making sure I'm dramatic with this because it's so important. When you have a liability, if your liabilities decrease, it will generate a credit. When your liabilities, I'm sorry, it will, it will generate a debit. Debit for decreased, credit for increase. And see how the normal balance, do you guys know what that normal balance? Of course you don't know what the normal balance on a T account is. You, you're just getting into accounting. The normal balance is, is generally what gets recorded when these get transferred into your reports. So if common stock goes up, there's a debit, there's a debit for a decrease. And if it goes up in an increase, that's going to be a credit. In the same way where we'll go to sales, right? Because this is what you're going to see for the next few chapters. A company makes a sale. There's two things that happen. We're going to fast forward into the into this for a minute. Okay. Matt DeYoung at the Crazy Coconut Farm in Belize sells one container of ice cream for cash and collects $15. Now there's two pieces of this equation that move. There's two pieces of this equation that are gonna change. What's the asset that I got to take in when I collected that? Well, it was cash, right? We go back and we say, what, okay, what happens? Let's look at these asset accounts. Oops, got a little, hit the, hit the overbar overzealous. All right. So Matt, Matt sells ice cream for $15. Now look at the bottom of your screen here in the chart of accounts. What are the two things that are impacted when I sell ice cream for $15? Adam Pierce for the first big money bonus points. What two parts of those chart of accounts are impacted when I sell ice cream for $15. Oh, you can call in a friend, phone a friend. Who's that creeping behind you? Jaden. Jaden, I want you to watch really closely as I circle things with my, with my mouse so that you can help Adam win these. When I sell, when I sell revenue, I sold it, it's revenue, sold it, revenue. So now let's run back into our, our answer key for understanding this. Revenues, increase or decrease surface? Increase. Increase. So until we have this memorized, our revenues increased. I just created a credit, right? Everybody nod your head that you can get to that point. I sold it. Revenues increased. I've got a credit. Now in your mind, you have to now realize that you're searching for the debit to offset it. In the world of accounting, if you know you have a credit, of $15, the other side of the accounting universe needs to get balanced with a debit, 
right? That's what we're doing. We're keeping the universe in balance in terms of accounting. So we sold it for $15. What did we get? Where are we gonna put that debit in? Well, I know I got $15 in cash. And I know because I memorized my asset list that cash is increasing or decrease. Camden, is cash gonna increase or decrease when I take $15 from a customer? It is going to increase. Nailed it. And look at this, all of a sudden we're about to find out that we can debit cash because it's coming into us, our asset is increasing. And we know from this thing that we've tattooed on our arms that debit means our asset increased. And we've gained revenue, which created a credit because revenue increased. Because those two sides of the, the equation balance, we can move on to the next thing. At this point, we're done. You guys wanna do a few more examples? Hold on, relax, settle down everybody. I know you're excited, we'll get there. I'm pretending that you guys were like, yeah, let's do it, Matt. I'm like, yes, this is what I was hoping for. So the next slide is showing you what the cash T account looks like. So what you're seeing here is a list of a whole bunch of transactions that all dealt with cash. And this is the little subcategory that will show us everything that's happened with cash and the balance that exists in the normalized account. That balance, that's when this normal becomes important. When you get to add up all of the cash that came in on the debit side and all of the cash that went out on the credit side. This will take a little bit to internalize, but remember this cash T account means debits on the left, credits on the right. Cash coming in, cash coming out. Nod your heads if you're with me. Ashlyn, would you say that this is the coolest thing you've ever learned at 11 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> you're my best friend now. All right, here we go. Now we have some work to do. Now we are going to analyze and record things to find out how they make an impact. So in your accounting book, you'll read this in chapter two. Step one, identify the transactions. Step two, stop and ask yourself, where in the accounting equation, where in exhibit 2.7 are each of those things gonna work out? And then we're gonna put it into our general journal. Our general journal is a list of everything that happens our general journal is a list of everything that happens in the business. And once you put it in the general journal, then you add it to the filing cabinet, which is a little sheet for each account. So there's four steps to all of these. And if you're somebody like me that doesn't love tedious details, this is where you can mentally check out. Like I'm not doing that or, all right. Don't show me your hands but I wanna tell you a little story about 20 year old Matt DeYoung. Somebody would have showed me this at 20, immediately I would have gone, that's what QuickBooks is for, right? Like what am I doing all this work for? I know that if I just type my stuff into QuickBooks, it will spit out these reports and I'll be in a company. I promise you next semester, the only thing that I will do with you in accounting is teach you how this works in the real life. Accounting one is about studying the rule book so that you understand the why behind it. Fair enough. So sit through this because I promise you in, when you're in your spring semester here, I'm gonna turn you loose on QuickBooks. And those of you that were born for accounting are gonna love it. And those of you that hate accounting are gonna be able to get through it and move on to pursuing marketing or management or one of those things. But having a decent understanding of this is so important because how can you be a business person if you don't know the rules of how you keep score? That makes sense to everybody? I have successfully run lots of businesses for months that didn't make any money because I wasn't keeping good enough track of everything. I don't want you to have that same problem. 
All right, so we're back in. We understand the flow and the way that things will work. So let's get into the nitty gritty of what does it look like once we put it in? Now this general journal, this is important for you guys to remember. The debit is always listed first. So if you look right here, the first thing you put on is the date. Why do you put the date on? Because accounting is all about going back and finding out what happened, right? And then this collection of everything that happened in December becomes really valuable to understand if you made any money in December. So you put down the date and then here's what happened. So this description in the textbook would have said, owner John Mann buys common stock for $30,000. And then you, as my accounting students, have to stop and analyze that. What are the two things that just happened? Right? I know the textbook gave me two things that happened. He gave us $30,000. A light bulb goes off in your head and you go, cash. All right. Cash is increasing in the company. I know where to put that. I'm going to put a debit of $30,000. But what did he get with it? What did he get? What did he buy? What did he buy for $30,000? And I will scroll right back up to this tattoo that you're all gonna buy. So we know we got 30,000 cash in. What is the other piece of the equation that took place when the owner purchased $30,000 worth of stock? And we're going to scan this, scan this, and all of a sudden we're going to go, aha, there's stock right there. Did stock increase or decrease? Hmm. You might say, I'm not really sure, right? Like, I'm not really sure if it increased or decreased because I don't really know how stock works. Well, because of what you just learned, you know that the company had an increase in its assets. Therefore, the accounting universe can't be made whole until we get ourselves a credit, right? So common stock, increase in common stock, 30,000, increase in cash, 30,000. Can everybody get there by, on their own? Then we're crushing it and we're doing great. Let's get into a couple more of them. And I promise you this will all start to make sense. It just takes a couple of weeks. And I promise I will stay in these weeds with you until we're all ready to come out. All right. So when we post the journal entry, we identify what's the debit and what's the credit. We put in the time and date. We look at our explanation, received an investment by owner. We put a debit, which is always on the left for 30,000 cash and a credit of common stock for 30,000. Now, the next step after that is you go and you make those little T accounts that are just for each account separately. So cash has its own general ledger or T account. In cash, you just have to put down, you debited cash on December 1. Put it in the debit column, walk away. You're happy with that. Put common stock, you have a credit balance of 30,000, walk away. So you did three things when you got that. You posted what happened in the journal, and then you created separate little T accounts for each one of those so that you could find out in isolation what happened. Again, the same exact thing we saw. Step one, identify it. And in your case, it's always gonna be Identify it means read the, read the instructions on your homework assignment or read the description of what happened for understanding, to analyze it, to think through it and say, okay, this is what we did. So here's our first transaction. Step one, identify. This is where the textbook says, fast forward receives 30,000 cash from Mr. Chaz Taylor in exchange for common stock. Well, we just went back to our, our, little, our little sheet on exhibit 2.7 and we said, okay, debit cash, credit common stock. 
here's what it looks like in the general journal. Here's what it will look like in all the unique categories, one that describes all the cash transactions, one that describes all the common stock transactions. Done, we're like real live accountants. Number two. All right, we'll do it without the aids. The company purchases $2,500 worth of supplies. The company purchases two point or twenty five hundred dollars worth of supplies. Who wants to be the first hero that tells me which two pieces of the accounting world are impacted when that happens? Well, the first question we have to ask ourselves: Oh, AJ Scott for fast money bonus points. Are there cash and supplies? This is the best day of my life. Cash and supplies are both impacted. Did our cash go in or out, AJ, when we bought supplies with it? Out. Cash goes out. Okay, everybody stop. Go look at exhibit 2.7. That thing that you just took a picture on your phone. We found out that cash went out to buy supplies. Now, because we're brand new to this, we would have to go back to exhibit 2.7. All right, go back to exhibit 2.7, pull it up on the screen, make it large enough that everybody can see it. And then let's really examine this. Cash goes out, credit for decrease. Our cash decreased when we bought supplies. So we've got the credit part of our, of our two pieces of the accounting equation that are impacted. What would the debit be? Well, in order for us to understand what the debit is, we have to ask ourselves the question, how does accounting classify supplies? Would that be an asset, a liability, or an equity? Who wants asset. to take that? Cooper Lake, out, yes. Hold on, I gotta write down that you're participating and you're a good student. All right, you're locked into the bonus points world too. We get an asset. So our asset increased, right? Our supply asset increased. Okay, so we make, and then we'll quick buzz back over here. So assets, we're dealing with two assets and we're right here in the green box negative cash. We have less cash. We have more supplies. The way that that gets recorded into the, the general journal is on this date, the debit always goes first and the credit is always indented. The debit goes first. We have a debit of $2,500 and we have a credit of $2,500. The accounting equation is balanced. We know that we did our job. We can move on to the next thing. How are we feeling at this point? We've done two examples. We have covered a lot of stuff that you have seen for the first time. Are we feeling confident? Do we feel pretty good about this? You guys were almost 45 minutes into this baby already. You wanna take five minutes and go get coffee and go to the bathroom? I don't I mean, I don't, I don't need to tell you when to go to the bathroom, Zerfas, I'm sorry. Take five minutes, come back ready to, to gut out this lecture for a little bit longer. I promise it will be worth it when you're doing your homework. So it, on my clock right now, it says 9.25 or 11.25 for you guys. Turn your camera off, stretch, do what you got to do. Meet me back here in five minutes to finish the lecture, okay? All right, we'll pull up our screen and now we are in the world of posting transactions. Go to the next one. Here is Fast Forward. That's the name of the company. It pays $26,000 cash for equipment. Let's motor through this one because now we have a good understanding of everything, right? 
We stop and we analyze. Fast forward pays $26,000 cash. Boom. The first thing that happens to our mind is we say cash is an asset. I know the first part of the equation. The second part of the equation is equipment. Buys equipment. Well, if you're buying equipment, you're buying an asset. So this one starts to sound a little bit easy, right? These are definitely two assets. We know that we're gaining equipment. That's the asset that is increasing. We know that when an asset increases, we get a debit. So that's the first thing that we write down on the journal. General journal, equipment goes right here. Equipment, $26,000. However, we lost $26,000 in cash. We then go in and to the little T-charts and we update it. See what happened here, guys? Our cash T account, our cash journal that only deals with cash now has three things inside of it. We gained $30,000 in cash when the gentleman bought his stock. And then we spent $2,500 in cash when we bought supplies. And we spent $2,600 in cash when we bought our equipment. Now that all lives here in the file folder so that we know how to make things work. Everybody with me so far? This is not so bad, all right. Number three, here we get into a different one. And I know I have the answers here, but it's probably still beneficial for you guys. Here's the question that comes up. Fast forward purchases $7,100 of supplies. Oh, here it comes, on credit. Boom, your mind has to stop. When it hears on credit, it always means you owe somebody. And whenever you owe somebody, a liability is created. So that those two words in any of these, boom, on credit, stop. I know what this means. It means I owe somebody money. Fast forward purchases $7,100 of supplies on credit from a supplier. Now I'm gonna go back to our answer key or our cheat sheet or the thing that I keep on telling you, you should get a tattoo of. We know that we bought something on credit. And I think that, that it said supplies, right? Let me make sure that I don't mislead us here. It says supplies. All right, thanks, man. All right, purchase supplies on credit. So we go back to our answer key and we say, purchase supplies on credit. Let's take a look at what that could possibly mean. Well, we know supplies are assets, right? So if we don't know anything else, we can start to build out. At least we know that supplies are assets and we are getting them. So they're increasing. So we know we have our debit side. Now we got to go hunt for the credit side that will help the accounting world stay in balance. Well, here we increased our liability. We increased the amount of money that we owe supplies in debit and credit universe in, in in proportion feeling good about this all right so um, let's do a few more. i did not get anything you said because your internet was like really shaky during that that time Hold on a second. All right. Do we have a better connection yet? So the first transaction that you see is owner puts cash into a business and that's how everything else moves forward is now the business has some cash. So what happens if, let's say you go out and start your own company soon, right? Josh is like, 
okay, I took accounting, I'm out of here, I'm gonna start my own business, this is no good. The first thing he has to do is open up a bank account before he does anything else. That's just part of how a business has to work. You open up a business account for the business and you put cash into it and all of your accounting builds off of that moment right there. All right, we're gonna go back in and keep on hammering these out. It should go a lot faster now, but if you're struggling, now's the time just to say like, hey, can you explain that a little bit better? If you're not struggling, that's great, stay silent, but this is your class time. This is where you get to be ready for going up against the connect monster. All right, we're gonna go into number seven now. Fast forward pays $700 cash for employees salary. So 700 cash is the first thing that stands out in our mind. Mr. Cameron Stahl, 700 cash, is it coming in or out? Are we gonna create a debit or a credit? Uh, they're paying it out, so it'd be a credit. Oh, I am the best teacher that ever lived in just 45 minutes. <laughs> that, was, that was foolish. Hayden, I'm sorry, you deserve better than that. Cameron, what's next? Now that you have found our credit, where's our debit? Pay $700 cash for employee's salary. Here we, here we know that our employee's salaries is always an expense. And if you scroll back or toggle back to the exhibit 2-7, when you have an expense that is created, it creates a debit, right? There's, there's an expense that's created, you pay it out, your cash is credited and your, your salary's expense is debit. And you can see when you move over to these T accounts, you have a new one that gets created, a new folder that goes into the, that goes into the, the cabinet that says salary's expense. And then you continue to add to your cash T account so that now you can see all the cash that came in and all the cash that came out. That's how you keep track of it. Number eight, provide consulting and rental services on credit. Provide consulting and rental services on credit. I made a mistake at the beginning of this lecture where I told you anytime it says on credit, it means liability. Here you provided your consulting and rental services on credit, which means your customer has a liability to you, but you have accounts receivable. So whenever you sell something on credit, it becomes accounts receivable. So I used to work at Sherwin Williams, the paint store and Customers didn't come in and pay with their credit cards or with cash every time they walked in. A lot of times it was accounts that were kept for, for different paint contractors. And at the end of the month, you'd send them a bill and they'd pay it all off. So they would come in, say, I want 10 gallons of paint. I would give it to them. There would be no money or credit card transaction that changed hands. What that created is what's called accounts receivable. Money that your customers owe you for things they've already taken. Nod your head if you're with me. All right, so we go back in and we look at transaction number nine. So we take in and this is the first time where the accounting equation has to get balanced by three things instead of just two. The way that the question is framed out is it, it gives you a little bit more of a challenge and a little bit more critical thinking about how it's supposed to piece together. So this customer came in and we got $1,600 for consulting services and $300 for test facilities. That's a total bill of $1,900. See how it's listed here that you have two separate forms of equity, one for consulting and one for rental revenue. 
Why would they do that? Why wouldn't they just call it all rental revenue? Or why would they just call it all revenue? Remember that all of these transactions are for the business owner to make sense of their business. So Parker, if you are the CEO of this company, you don't just want to know how much we sold. You want to know which categories we sold. Do I need to invest more time and energy into the rental department? Do I need to do something about the consulting? The more detailed you get with the amount of accounts that you keep track of, the more detailed your understanding of your own business is. So in this case, accounts receivable, it means our customer, this is our asset. Money that, money that your customers owe you is an asset. So we have an asset of $1,900 in accounts receivable, which is money that's owed to us by our customers. And then in order to make sure that we do that correctly, we have two separate revenue accounts that are impacted. You've got a $1,600 credit and consulting revenue. That's money that you earned through sales. And you sold $300 in rental revenue. That's how the equation gets evened out in this case to make sure that there is a debit and credits that are equal. Make sense to everybody? Any questions or concerns or thoughts on that one? We can do it. Beautiful. Fast forward receives. So here is what happens when a customer pays their bill, right? That's what's happening in this equation. Fast forward receives $1,900 in cash from the customer that we just billed. In order for the accounting equation to remain balanced, we collect the cash in a debit and we credit accounts receivable because that's no longer on our books. And see what happens here? Our accounts receivable has a debit of 1900 and a credit of 1900, which means that that account is empty. We don't have to worry about it. But we can see here that cash still needs to get added up, right? We have all this cash in and all this cash out. We'll fill out the normal balance to tell us what's next. All right, cash and accounts payable. So partial payment of accounts payable. Accounts payable is money that you owe to somebody else. Accounts receivable is money that is owed to you. That's something you should write down. Accounts receivable is money that is owed to the business or owed to you. Accounts payable is a liability it's owed to other people. It's money that the business owes. So here, we take $900 worth of our cash and we spend it to pay down the money that we owe other people. That's what this is telling us. So we know that we credit cash because cash is leaving the business. So we have to find our debit. In this case, we're gonna debit accounts payable, which is our liability, because our liability is shrinking, it's going away. Payable of a cash dividend, and I'm not gonna go through all these because I think you guys are getting it. Ooh, this is important. So now I've just moved up to, to three, but I want you guys to understand one thing. Anytime the book tells you that something is prepaid, it becomes an asset. So like my insurance coverage is, well, the insurance coverage for this company is $2,400 a year or $2,400 and they're paying a, a 24 month policy. When they pay that, they're actually buying an asset of prepaid insurance. So anytime that you see prepaid on this list, your mind has to think asset. Also really worth writing down so that you can put that into your, into your mental framework. And we keep on going. So basically what we did is we just took, we just took 16 transactions, 16 receipts from the desk of the company accountant, and we put them into accounting frameworks so that we can build reports for the business. So this is what our general ledger looks like. And even if you hadn't done that with me, this is why students are like, I don't wanna take accounting. Like, look at this, it, it, it can look intimidating if you don't realize that this is just a collection of all the little accounts that we keep track of. This is what our filing account or our filing cabinet looks like. 
Here's everything that we touched with cash in those 18 transactions. Here's everything we, talk, we touched with accounts receivable. And look at this, here's our normal balance. This is the first time where normal balance comes into play. We have $4,275 worth of cash left in the business. We have no accounts receivable, nobody owes us any money. And we have purchased $9,700 worth of supplies. See how this all works? Any questions about this one, guys? You're very much so crushing it and I appreciate it. All right, this is where it gets really important. We have to create the income statement and the balance sheet and the owner's equity sheet and the cash, the cash flow statement from what we just did. Because right now we just took it and we put it in the filing cabinet. But now the boss has come and said, hey, I've got a big meeting with everybody. I need the reports for last month so I can go through it with everybody. Right? Have any of you guys ever walked into a meeting with your boss and they were like, sales is up 20%, expenses are up this. This is all because of putting those into the filing cabinet the correct way. So we click open, preparing a trial balance. A trial balance is just taking the normal balance from the ledger and putting it into the context of a trial balance. So here's what the trial balance looks like. The trial balance is the next step before you make your reports. So in layman's terms, we take all of these sub accounts, we pull their normal balance out, and we use that to populate our trial balance. So see what happened? Our cash had a debit account, a debit balance of this, accounts receivable this, supplies here. So we're just, all we're doing is taking, taking those T accounts, taking their, their balance and putting them into this sheet. Nod your heads if you're with me. Okay. At the end of the day, your trial balance always has to be equal. The largest frustration of those of you that are gonna start your assignment two hours before it's due is when your credits and debits don't add up and you have to go back through and figure out where you made your mistake. And that's gonna to happen to all of you because it's accounting one, like you're, you're learning how to do this. Make sure that your trial balance always has equal credits and equal debits. If it doesn't have that, you can't move on to the next step. So the very important statements that every single company makes are these four, balance sheet, income statement, statement of retained earnings, statement of cash flows. The balance sheet, see we're in that, that uh, pink box at the bottom, it says for a point in time. The balance sheet says today, the year of our Lord, September 9th, here's what my business owns. Here's what we owe. Here's what we're worth. There's our sheet as of today. The income statement, the retained earnings, and the cash flows, those are all for a period of time. So you would say, give me the income statement for August. I want to see how we did. The accountants go through, they take all the receipts, they put them into the right spots. These accounts spit out. Those are either for a month or a year. Very rarely will, will companies use them in any other way except for how do we do in 2020? Let's pull out the income statement for the whole year. It will list to us, what did we sell? What expenses did we have? What cash was left over in net income? So here's our financial statements and you guys are getting, here's how I can make sure that this is important. The rest of your accounting assignments, for the entirety of the semester, you will be building income statements, balance sheets, statements of cash flows. The next two weeks, building an income statement is gonna take you three hours. And you're gonna be like, oh man, this is stupid. Just do it. Because you know what you have to learn how to do in order to be successful in this class? Is take that three hour time that it took you to build your first income statement 
and be able to do it in 20 minutes. And all of you will, as long as you put the time in. It doesn't get harder, but it's repetition, right? It's just like learning how to play basketball for the first time. When you go and shoot your first free throw, unless you're awesome, you, you probably need some work at it. And it takes you longer. That's what you're doing as you guys are about to say, hey, I wonder if business is right for me. I wonder if I wanna go into business. Take the time to learn how to build these statements so that when you read them, you can see a business. Wow, is it already 12 o'clock? Let's talk real talk for a second here, guys. What's lunch like? Like if I let you out a little bit early, does that change your life in a positive way? Or do you just like, give me more of this accounting, I really want this. Like I know there's lunch lines or something, right? And everybody's got COVID now, so you wanna hurry up and get the food before all those germ of, sorry. All right, I'm gonna try to wrap it up. So stay with me. Does anybody have any questions before I get down into the, the, the next piece of the lecture? All right, then I will, I promise you I'll hurry up. Cooper, thanks for being honest with me, like get me out of here. That I'm mad at you, but I'm glad that you told me the truth. All right, so our income statement, it lists all our sales, all our expenses, net income, what's left over. All of this is created from the receipts that we just went through one by one together. The next step, The next step is our statement of returned or retained earnings. What this is, it basically says, here is, here's the money that we got to put to the bottom line in net income, plus the dividends that we took out. Here's the money that the owner got to take out of the business. That's what retained earning is, is after you did all of your business transactions, you made all the sales, you paid all the expenses. Does the owner get to put any money in their pocket? That's what the statement of retained earnings is. The balance sheet is a snapshot in time of all of your assets, all of your liabilities, all of your equity. And you are done with that monster PowerPoint presentation. Now we're going to take a look at what is coming up and do, and then we're going to get you out of here. So if we go back into connect, did I already show you guys everything that I see when I look into your connect work? Like how much time you spent, what it looks like. I already put the fear of trying to use course hero into your mind so you don't do it. Take the time to put, to put the time in. All right, what's coming up for you guys, I made one shift. That smart book reading assignment that you guys finished this weekend, I'm not going to have you do one this, this week. And I'm not going to have you do one for a very important reason. I want to know which one is more valuable. Having you do the video learning and take notes during that or doing the reading via smart book. So next week, I want your feedback, if you have any, that says, yeah, give me the smart book. I like doing that. Or you know what? Between the videos and searching through the stuff on Connect, I feel like I'm learning everything. So you have a video assignment, which is due this weekend. It looks like three days away from now. There's 35 questions worth 100 points. Um, Elena did this in an hour. So make sure that you spend at least an hour because that's how long it takes just to get through the videos. My hope is that now that you've sat through my lecture and taken notes, this all becomes really easy and helps build on it much faster. After you're done with the videos, which is almost impossible to get a bad grade on, you have your chapter two assignment, which is 28 questions, all of them very similar to what we ran into today. This is the first time that you guys will get into some equation problems though, like the ones that will really terrify you if you don't know what you're up against. You're gonna get an assignment like this. So if you've tuned out, bear with me for five more minutes because this will be helpful to you. You are responsible for taking these transactions up top, analyzing them and putting them into the general journal at the right spot.
what you need to re realize is you're doing all of the things that we did in lecture, only you're going to plug it into the Connect software. So when you're doing question 24, it's going to take you a half an hour to get this question done. You just have to be mentally prepared for that. Um, without fail on week two, a student always calls me and they're like, well, I just don't get this. And I'll go into connect and I'll see that they've been on the question for three minutes. And I'll say, well, of course you don't get it. You're only three minutes into a 30 minute question. What you do is you put it in the journal and then you slide down here and you make the T accounts and then you put a trial balance together. You do all of the things we just talked about now, you might say, I wasn't listening in lecture, I was bored, or I fell asleep. If you click the hint button, you will actually watch somebody do the same assignment that I gave to you with different numbers, and it will walk you through everything. So if you click hint, and you grab your notebook, and you take notes, you'll see this whole problem in its entirety again before you do it. Does that all sound fair and reasonable? All right. The last 10 minutes of class are for individual questions on homework or anything just to chat with me. Those of you that want to go get in line for lunch, thanks for letting me power through this with you. I promise to make it more interesting and interactive next week, but learning the foundation is important. Let me pray for us and then uh, I'll let you guys get on your way. Father God, thank you for business. Thank you for the ability to create and to build and to think of new ideas and to use the talents and the brain power that you gave us to continue to influence the world for you. Lord, I pray that you would watch over these students and that you would continue to give them the comfort and peace of knowing that you're in charge. God, you're good and we love you. Amen. All right, I'm going to stay on for personal questions. I've stopped the recording.